Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I wanted to show you this beautiful new patriotic table topper that is just out from Designs by Juju. I absolutely love this. It was so fun to make and I just think it's gonna look amazing with all of the patriotic holidays we have coming up. This will look beautiful in any room in your home. When I make this design, I used a multi-needle, but if you have a single needle, the process is exactly the same. You will just have to change your thread colors on your own. This project is 13 hoopings. We have a nine patch that makes up the base, and then we have four corner units, and each one of those corner units is in two parts, but they stitch in the same hooping. This comes in sizes five by seven, six by 10, and eight by 12. This is such a beautiful, versatile project. If you wanted to, you could add a monogram in the middle, which would be beautiful. You could put God bless the USA. You could have endless options of what to do with this gorgeous table topper. I did use SF 101 from Pellon on the back of the background fabric, the white fabric. And if you use Pellon SF 101 on the back of your background fabric, you do not need to put it onto your applique pieces. For the applique, I pre-cut my pieces using the Brother Scan and Cut. I created SVG cut files using Embrilliance Essentials, and I will show you how to do that in this video. Speaking of which, there are timestamps below in the description box. If you would like to jump ahead and skip over all of that, you can do that by checking out those timestamps. You cannot see the timestamps if you're watching on a TV, but you can see them on a computer or a mobile device. It makes your life so much easier to pre-cut all of the applique pieces. If you don't have the ability to pre-cut your applique pieces because you don't have a cutting machine, when you do the applique, you will stitch out the placement lines and then lay the color of fabric down that you want on top of that, and then you will let it stitch down the tack down lines, and then you will take your scissors and trim around the outside of the tack down, and then it will do the final satin stitching. I'll link to a video at the end of this video if you are brand new and you need help with learning applique for the embroidery machine. If you would like to make yours look just like mine, I will put a link below to fabric kits where you can get one, and then you'll be ready to go. You'll have everything that you need. Also, with the fabric kit, there is an option for a thread kit as well in red, white, and blue. One of the things that I recommend that you do with this particular project is to print out your supply list. And what I did in my supply list, let me hold this out so you can see. I identified that block A are blocks two, four, six, and eight. Block B is blocks one and nine, and block C is blocks three and seven. And for batting, I needed 17 pieces of batting and they were all the same size. On the back, block D is the center and block E are the side triangles. I like to circle the size that I'm gonna make so that I don't make a mistake and accidentally cut the wrong size. I liked the line drawing so much that I made mine look just like that using white fabrics. But this drawing right here shows you that block A is two, four, six, and eight, and B is one and nine, and C is three and seven, and then E are your side triangles. This was really a lot of fun to make, and believe it or not, it went together pretty quick and easy. The trick if you are new to applique embroidery or you're new to projects like this is these these look like a lot, but these blocks, they're all the same. They're multiples of the same block put together into this beautiful pattern. Where some technique really needs to come in is when you're putting it together. So I go into that pretty closely throughout the video and I have a whole section on putting it together and then finishing with the beautiful backing on the back. And the backing also is part of the kit if you want to order that. All right, you guys, I can't wait to show you how to do this. Let's get started.
I am about ready to stitch out the uh, Designs by Juju Patriotic Table Topper. And I have in Brilliance open, I want to create my own SVG cut files to pre-cut the pieces in the scan and cut for the applique. Uh, I'm here in my file folder, I'm under Embroidery, DBJJ, and Patriotic Table Topper. I went ahead and deleted all of the other embroidery files except for the PES file folder. It just makes it easier for me to find. And I'm going to double click this and open it up. And this first one right here for block A, I'm going to open this. I'm making the 6x10. So I created a file folder for the 5x7s and another file folder for the 8x12s and took all of those designs and just kind of parked them in there. So I know only to use these designs right here. I'm going to uh, grab this and uh, drop it onto the Embrilliant screen. And I want to come back here. I want to take a look at the instructions just to make sure I'm making the right amount of these. So this is the block right here, A. So I need one, two, three, four of those. Now to make your own SVG cut files from Embrilliance, you just need to locate the placement line. That usually works just perfect. I'm in the objects panel right here. I'm gonna click on the plus sign. And I like to go through here even if I'm not gonna make SVG files, just because I want to inspect the design to see what it's gonna do. So here we have the placement line for the batting and the tack down for the batting. There's the tack down for the fabric. And here is the background quilting. There's the placement line for the blue. And I'm going to come down here to the properties box and you've got two tabs, color and stitches. I'm gonna click on color and I'm just gonna click on the color chip one time and I get a thread dialog box and then it says color or applique. I'm gonna click on the applique tab. I'm gonna tell it applique position. And for Designs by Juju, I have found it's just perfect to, in this cutting section right here, you've got fabric and all this other stuff. You don't need to worry about any of that. In the cutting section, I set it to 1.0 millimeter inflate and that just barely covers the placement line and it just works perfect and it's still small enough that it gets completely covered by the final satin stitching. So I'm just going to click on the save button and when I save it, it's, uh, look down here, it says save as type, it's coming up as a SVG file. So I'm going to hit the drop down here and I need to navigate to my folder. I'm going to create a new folder in here now. Up here, there's a teeny, teeny, tiny little yellow folder, and it's to create a new folder. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to just put SVG files. And hit enter, and then double click that. And we're just going to 6 by 10 block A, and I'm going to put blue, and hit save. And OK, and OK. All right. So then here is the tack down. I don't really need that because I'm going to iron the piece on. The fabric will have heat and bond light on the back. And here is the placement line for the next one. I'm going to click on the chip and I'm going to click on applique and applique position. Save. I'm going to make this one in red. So I'm just going to get rid of all this. Red. There we go and click save and okay and okay. All right, and so then there's the tack down for the red, my star. Okay, I wanna click on this and click on the color chip, click on the applique, tell it applique position and save and block a star save. Okay, and okay. All right, that's it for the applique pieces in here. The rest of this is the tack down for the star, blue satin stitching, red satin stitching, star satin stitching, little streamer satin stitching, and little more streamers, whatever I call it, satin stitching. All right, so that's done. I'm going to uh, control 
A to select all and hit delete. This is canvasworkspace.brother.com. It's free to use. And I'm going to go to new, make myself a new project, get a new mat. And up here across the top, uh, the fourth button over, the fourth icon is in SVG. And I'm going to import SVG, my SVG files folder. And I'm going to go to block A blue and open. And OK. These are individual, even though they're all one design element, they're individual pieces. So to conserve fabric, I'm going to kind of put these like this. They are not interchangeable on the design. Some are smaller than others. So I'm just going to do them in order one, two, three, four, like this. And it doesn't, you, you don't need to worry about figuring out which one goes where because they're all different sizes. All right, so I need four of these. I'm going to highlight them all and uh, right click and group. And so this piece of fabric would be like three and a half by six and a half. But now I'm going to right click duplicate and duplicate and duplicate. Okay. So now instead of needing a big 10 inch square of fabric, I can really get it done on a much smaller piece of fabric. See, looks like a bunch of teeth. All right. So those are my blue ones up there. I'm going to move those down to the bottom. And oh, it is so nice not to have to cut these, you guys. Oh my goodness. All right, now I'm going to click SVG again and choose File. And let's pull in Block A Red and open. OK, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to group these just to find out how much fabric I need. I like to go about an inch larger, so five and three quarters by nine and a half will work for this one right here. I'm going to make a little note. I'm going to save it, so I'm going to call it block A red dash blue. Okay, and I'm going to come to project and hit the inbox with an arrow and a plus sign. That saves that. Okay. I'm ready to go iron heat and bond light on the back of my fabrics and then I'll go over to the scan and cut. Here's my method for putting on heat and bond. I just unroll enough off the bolt and I put, I just barely put the edge of the fabric over the edge of the heat and bond so that there's no sticky sticking out. And then, oh, this is such a pretty blue. Oh my goodness. And then I will just do this so that it is tacked on, not get any on the iron. And then I take my scissors and trim just a tiny bit off, tiny, tiny bit, so that there's no glue showing out from the other side. It's not stuck on enough yet. Okay. All right. So then, I don't have any glue sticking out. And then I just hold this in place for about eight to 10 seconds all over the whole thing and really adhere the heat and bond to the fabric. If you want it to look really glassy, like the heat and bond is now one with the fibers. You don't want to be able uh, to let it peel off because that's not gonna work. This is a low tack mat. It's not that sticky. So I am putting pretty side up and heat and bond side down. If you've got a really sticky mat, you're going to want to put fabric side down and paper side up and mirror your design. All right, so I'm just gonna put this on and I do not trust the sticky at all. So I have some scotch tape and I'm going to scotch tape down all four sides. And that just lets the fabric know, hey, I really kind of want you to stay right here. Don't go anywhere. 
because it will as that drags around. A lot of times when I make SVG files from an embroidery design, it will leave like an extra thread. It won't cut completely. It leaves one thread. And as it picks up and moves, it might drag. And we just don't need anything like that. Now I'm ready to go ahead and get this into the machine. I just downloaded the design, so let's go cut it. All right, so we're here at the main screen and your menu items are pattern, and scan. Pattern are patterns that are in the machine when you bought it and we're not going to scan just yet. We're not scanning any uh, pictures or anything. There's a button down here that says retrieve data and that's what I want. So I'm going to touch retrieve data. Where am I going to get it from? From the machine, from the cloud, from a USB, or I might be cabled to my computer. I'm going to get it from the cloud. And there it is. Awesome. So the first thing I want to do is to now that blue box right there with a bar across it, that's the scanner button. I'm going to scan that and hit start and press that and hit start. And now it's going to take a picture of what it sees on the mat. So I can make sure that the design is going to fit and not miss anything during the cut. It's a little close, so I can touch it and just move it just a hair like that. That ought to work. Okay, I'm going to tell it okay. And it says please select and cut and start. Oh man, I do not want to cut these by hand. Okay, this is the Brother PR1055 Entrepreneur Pro X. It is the 10 needle and I absolutely love this thing. I've had it several years now and it is definitely my go-to machine when I need to be stitching multiples of things. On the back of the machine I have the red thread on spool number one, blue on number two, baby blue on number three, and I have King Stars metallic silver color MS1 on the spool number four. And I manually assign colors to each needle. It just makes it easier for me rather than having to go in and program all of that ahead of time. So I've got my monster snap hoop from Designs of Machine Embroidery on the machine and I have No Show Mesh cut away in, in the hoop. This is the, I think it's the 8x12, might be 8x14 uh, hoop. And I have a Filtech magnetic bobbin in the bobbin case. All right, so let me get up here and show you how I'm gonna program this. I tried to remove as much glare as possible and it, I know it's dark here, but I think you can see the screen okay. All right, I sent the design over wirelessly, so I'm going to touch the wireless button. And my wireless designs will pop up. Here it is, right there. And I'm going to hit set because that's the one I want to use. Here you can resize or rotate. I don't want to do any of that since I have already cut my fabric pieces with the scan and cut. So I'm just going to hit edit end. I don't need to do anything else to this. All right, now I'm gonna go in and, and touch my three thread spools. And this is how I manually assign thread. Make sure that tie in and tie out are highlighted so that you get the knot and you don't get any loose threads at all. I'm gonna to touch my three spools. And this column right here corresponds to all of the color stops in the design. There are 15 color stops this is a preview window right here, and these two columns right here correspond to the spools on the back of the machine. Then we have the hand to stop, we have a do not stitch, and the OK button. So number one, the very first color stop, I want that to be white, and I have white anchored on number six and number five. I did that in the color settings. So I'm gonna go uh, on color stop number one, I want it to be spool number six, 
So the one change to a six right there, and then color stop number two, I want that to be white as well. But before it stitches, I want it to stop so I can put the batting down. So I'm gonna put the hand up. The little tiny hand popped up right here. A brother educator told me that the hand is up at the top of the little bar and so it because the fingers are up past the top of the spool and so it would supersede the stitching i guess that made sense to the engineers at brother but to me the way i am the way it works in my brain is instead of stitching and stopping left to right it actually stops then stitches and that's how I remember that. So in instead of telling, if you told it to stop here on number one, that doesn't do any good. It's not gonna stop before number two. Okay, color stop number two. So it is stop and then stitch. So this is, um, I said left to right. I, it depends on which way you're looking at this thing, left to right, right to left, either way. You want it to stop so you can do applique or trim or whatever you need to before the next color stop, then put your hand up at the next color stop. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm, I want that to be number six as well on white. And then the third color stop, I also want to be white, but before it stitches, I want it to stop so I can put my fabric on. So I'm gonna put my little hand there and tell it to stop, and I'm gonna tell it okay. The next stitch is all of the cross hatching for the background quilting. I don't want it to stop before it does that, so it can go ahead and do that, and I want that to stitch on color number six as well, spool number six. The next one is the placement line for the blue. That's gonna be spool number two. That's this one right up back here, spool number two. And the next stitch is the tack down for spool number two. I don't need that to stitch because I'm gonna iron the pieces on. If you don't have pre-cut pieces, you would leave that on and you would wanna tell it to stop before it stitches so that you can put your fabric on there and get everything, and then it'll, and then it'll stitch the tack down. If you're not pre-cutting your pieces, you do want a hand there. I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna tell it do not stitch because I don't need it to. So the next color stop is number seven and this is the placement line for the red. So I want that to be spool number one. And I'm gonna come down here. There is the tack down for spool for the red. I don't need that to stitch. I'm gonna tell it do not stitch. And here is the placement line for the star. I want that to be spool number six. There's the tack down for the star. I'm gonna tell that do not stitch. Okay, now kind of follow me here. I am not going to iron the star down. I'm gonna iron down the red and the blue all at the same time. And then I will iron the star on after, because the star sits on top of the blue and red stitching. So, okay. So this is the final satin stitch for the blue. That is spool number two. Final satin stitch, it looks like baby blue here. I'm gonna use, um, I'm using red, that is spool number one. Here is the final satin stitch for the star. Before it stitches that, I want it to stop. So I can go iron the star on. And when it stitches that, I want that to be spool number four, my pretty silver. All right, there are my starbursts and uh, detail that's going to be in the baby blue on spool number three and then the final little starburst things uh, also spool number four the metallic silver all right that looks really good so that's how you custom program now there's not a way I mean I can say memory and save it to the machine I don't know if those spools are stick or not we'd have to see but I don't think so so I'm all finished with this now. I can tell it embroidery and we're ready to go. It's that simple. On this screen, what you get is a preview window and it tells you how long that stitch 
is going to take. You get a, I've told it, I, we had 15, I told it I didn't need three of them, so we're down to 12 stitches. It has a total of 14,489 stitches and it's going to take 30 minutes to stitch out. And then right here gives you a little list of what you're doing. So I'm just going to hit lock and go. What's the matter? What happened? Uh, I'm going to hit needle plus minus. For some reason it didn't pick up the bobbin thread because I checked the bobbin to make sure we had enough. I'm going to go back to zero. I'm going to tell it OK. And let me check it. Double check. Make sure. Yeah, it didn't grab the bobbin thread. My tail's not that long. All right, let's try it again. There we go. So it stopped. Now, this is a really good use of batting scraps. I'm using a white background fabric, so if you're using a batting uh, on your batting and you're using white, make sure there's no colored threads on there or anything. So this is the tack down for the batting. And it stops so I can put my fabric down. In this kind of embroidery, I tend not to cut out the individual pieces. I will just keep it as a whole. And this saves a ton of fabric if you do this. And I will take a iron away marker and mark the outside of it to make sure I don't overlap. Okay, we're all finished. Oh, it turned out just beautiful. Very, very pretty. We hit okay, so it quits blinking at me. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and put the other one that I'm going to do right over here on this side, and that'll be my fourth one. So that just makes it so easy to, you know, do one, do two. And then I've probably got enough fabric down here to go ahead and do the next bunch of blocks in this same square. Just turned out gorgeous. I love it.
So see, instead of cutting two eight by eight pieces of fabric, I just used one strip there. And I've got plenty in between to rough cut these and then use the trimmer by George. All right, all finished. Let me take this apart. And I will normally, in between, I'll just, I, I don't necessarily have to cut. It just makes it easier to let, get it to lay flat when you're gonna do the full cut. I'm gonna cut all my blocks at one time. So uh, I am just going to do a rough cut said get this right and I need to get some more SF 101 on the back if you have SF 101 which is that shape flex 101 it's a woven that adheres to the back of your fabric if you have that on the back of your fabric you do not need SF 101 on your applique fabrics so I have to have one half inch seam allowance out here I'm gonna go ahead and make an inch and a half seam allowance and just cut it. That just makes sure I've got plenty to hold and lift and move and whatever it is I need to do. So because I'm using the trimmer by George, I am going to leave all of this stuff on there and I'll cut it all at one time. So that is all four now of my blocks two, four, six, eight. And now I need to do one, three, seven, and nine and get those done. I'm gonna to continue to use the white fabric. The whole thing's gonna be white and uh, I think it's just gonna be gorgeous. I can't wait. Now, if you're stitching this on a single needle, you don't need to do this next part that I'm gonna do. I wanna put down the placement lines for both triangles at the same time the tack downs at the same time, and the tack down for the fabric at the same time. I'm gonna reorder these, and then the multi-needle, you gotta watch. Sometimes it will color sort for you when you're not thinking about it, and you won't be able to put in a stop. This is lower triangle placement, tack down, fabric tack down. All right, and then we go through. I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna say, move first. And then I'm gonna grab it on the picture and I'm going to drag it to, and hover it over the one I want it to be after. So that one will stitch first, the placement line, and then this placement line. And then let me grab this one. That is my tack down for my batting. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna tell it move first. And then I'm gonna grab it and pull it down and hover it over the one I want it to be after. And then this last one here, that's the tack down for the fabric. I'm gonna right click and move first. And then I'm going to make this one, I'm gonna hover it over that. So at my multi-needle, it will stitch batting placement, batting placement. I'm gonna make it stop, put the, fab, put the batting down, batting tack down, batting tack down, make it stop, fabric tack down, fabric tack down. That's what I want. That'll work out really well. Okay, I'm here at the machine and here are my modified triangles. Um, if you come from home, you'd hit the wireless button and there's my triangles and it says it wants to rotate it because it's too tall and I'll tell it that's okay. And I'm gonna hit set, that's the one I want. And now edit end, I don't need to do anything else to it. So now I want to assign thread colors manually to it. I'm gonna to touch that. So look, we went from over 25 down to 10 stitches. See how the machine is going to stitch these at the same time. So these are the color stops. Here is your preview button, one out of 10 and these 10 right here go to the spools on the back of the machine. We have a hand that says 
stop, we have a do not stitch and okay. Number one is the placement line for the batting. I'm gonna choose number six so that it's, uh, I've got a spool of white on number six. The next one is the tack down for the batting. Before it stitches that, I want it to stop. And uh, so I can put the batting on the placement line and then stitch with spool number six in white. And number three is the tack down for the fabric. Before it stitches that, I wanna tell it to stop and then I want it to stitch in white. All right, this is the background quilting. See, it combined both uh, into one. So that is also number six in white. Here are the placement lines for both. So it wants to stitch the placement lines for both of these blue and red stars at the same time. I don't have a problem with that. We'll just use spool number one and make them red, okay? Now, there is the final satin stitching for the red stars. Before it stitches that, I wanna tell it to stop so I can pull the hoop and iron on all of the applique. There's the final blue satin stitching that'll be on spool number two. There are some little swirlies and that's spool number three. There are my silver stars, that'll be spool number four. And there are the two pretty dots, and that'll be spool number one in red. There we go. That looks great. And look how quick and easy that is. Where are we? I'm going to hit embroidery. I told it okay. Go into embroidery. And we're 20 minutes, 21 minutes. So this tells you we're on zero out of 10, 9,543 stitches, and it's going to take 21 minutes. And here is your preview right here. So this is awesome. I'm going to hit lock and go. I'm going to put my batting down. I'm just going to, I had already pre-cut my batting into the squares. I could use a whole piece, but this will work, I think. So long as I make sure to cover the entire placement line, I'm going to butt those edges up together. There, that looks good. fabric right here. I made a mistake. So as soon as you notice that, the way you fix on the fly, there's a magic wand right here. If I try to change it right now, it won't work because it's in mid-stitch. So I'm gonna hit lock and cut and cut that white thread. Now I'm gonna go to the magic wand and see if I try to stitch, hit number one it knocks at me and it won't let me do it I'm gonna tell it okay go into needle plus minus and touch the six to start it again now it thinks it hasn't stitched yet now you can tell it okay now you can go into the magic wand and I'm gonna tell it one and it'll put a little magic wand there now it won't save that so the next time I run it before I run it, I'm actually going to go in and correct that uh, before it ever starts because I've got to make four of these and this is the first one. So just making sure the next one is two, three, four, and one. Okay, so the rest of these are right. I'm going to touch OK. And now it's going to start again. And now it's just going to stitch red stitching right on top of what it already was. And again, I'm, I'm not removing the white because the satin stitch is going to cover it. All finished. Oh, that turned out beautiful. Really, really pretty. 
So this is how I'm going to do two at a time. I've got to fix that one in the design before I stitch the next red one and then I'm done. So, okay, one down, three of these to go. I just finished the two B blocks and these look so much alike. I'm going to go ahead and put a B right in the seam allowance with a iron off marker next to these. And then I've got the pieces cut for the C block and I'm, I'm getting ready to stitch those now right down here. Um, I probably ought to mark these on the back so that I don't get confused with which one is which. So that kind of tells me where I'm at. Okay. That's how I'm going to keep that straight. I have figured out, place this on the tape. It's much easier than trying to put the fabric on while it's on the machine. I'm going to slide it off the table just a little bit and then clip these little binder clips on there. And that'll hold the fabric in place. Since the machine put these placement lines down at the same time, like a color sort that did it on its own. The blue one was stitched out first and I it, it wouldn't let me switch thread colors because it, it color sorted. So what I did was after the blue one stitched, I just put a B on that one and then I let it finish and it and it stitched the rest. So I know that the blue goes on these and then the red on top of that. So that's how I'm sorting that out. Right I want to share a little secret. I made a mistake and I cut the wrong shape on block C of the blue ones and I didn't have any more blue fabric to make another to make another run through the scan and cut. So what I did and if you do this, this is how you fix that the right shape was the red for block C. I guess I got the red and blue fabric flipped around. I, I don't know what I did. Anyway, so this is the right shape that should have been blue. So I just cut one of them off. I'm gonna show you, I traced it on a scrap of the blue. I just outlined it. And then I'm using my shears And I'm cutting on the inside of the line. I used a ruler to trace around the shape. So that made the line just, made the shape just a little bit bigger than I really want. So I'm cutting on the inside of the line. And I had to make eight of these. And I had enough scraps of the first cut that already had heat and bond on the back. And, um, and it worked. So it's over there on the machine stitching out right now. I'm sure you can hear it, but that's how you fix that. So now I have four and it's going to work out fine. So that's how you fix that. Okay, I'm over here. I wanted to show you, so I made my boo-boo. These are the pieces, this, this one just finished stitching. These are the pieces that I cut manually out of the scraps and they worked fine. And now I have put the new ones on one at a time. So those are ironed on and now I need to put the red one on and I cut one of the leaves off of it or one of the points off of it to use as a tracing pattern to make the blue. So that's okay. It'll be fine. I'll just glue it back where it goes. And uh, there is so much satin stitching in the middle of this, you'll never see it. It will, it will disappear. But if you make this mistake, it's okay. It's not the end of the world, but don't throw your scraps away until you completely finish this project. And that's kind of true for any project. That is just a good rule of thumb when you're doing these kinds of things where you have limited amounts of fabric. So it is salvageable if you cut the wrong shape. I don't cut the wrong shape too, too often, <laughs> but if you do, I still have a whole big pile of scraps here and here, 
and there's some more somewhere else and I could probably make a whole nother two or three of these but uh, <sighs> disaster averted all right we have finished all the blocks I say we I have finished all the blocks and I'm gonna cut them out now using a tool from hoopsisters.com called Trimmer by George. And I will put a link to this below the video. This is the most incredible tool for doing these types of projects in the hoop where you have a requirement to stitch a block and then uh, get rid of the, they want you to cut the batting away in the hoop as part of the block construction. The Trimmer by George prevents that. So what this is, so what is so wonderful about this is it has this metal lip right here, okay? And this metal lip allows you to pull up the fabric. I've got two bunches here, let me show you. You pull up the fabric out of the way. So the SF-101 is on the back of the fabric. So you pull that up out of the way. You might have batting, you might have a little bit of stabilizer or whatever. And then you take this metal edge and you push it snugly up against the seam line and you fold it over and you've now protected the project. Now you cannot use this with most 45 millimeter rotary cutters. I guess you can with this one. Yeah, you can. This is a Dritz 45 millimeter. It will work. It will not work with the uh, the Ulfa. If it's the button right here, it gets in the way and they recommend, the Hoop Sisters recommend that you use the 60 millimeter. But the way this one is designed, it will work. So you can just, the button doesn't hit right here, but you just do this. So now you've trimmed away the stabilizer and the batting, and then it has measuring guides marked on it and this way they're upside down to you but now you can flip it this way and we need to cut a half inch seam allowance and so now I can put the half inch line right on the seam line and then cut and I have a perfect half inch seam allowance. The easiest way to do this is to rough cut these first Okay, and if you have a rotary mat, that can be helpful. You don't have to, but it helps. Okay, so all I'm doing is lifting up the fabric. And whatever is left underneath will be cut away. And then I can fold this over and I can see very clearly the stitch line through the clear acrylic. This makes life so much easier compared to removing the hoop and then putting it on your lap or on a table and trimming away the batting each and every time. See, I, you don't necessarily need a rotary mat. I mean, it's helpful, but you don't have to have it. Okay. This is the greatest thing in the world. Now, this is the Trimmer by George 3.0. It has undergone some uh, cosmetic changes over time, but whether you have the original Trimmer by George, Trimmer by George 2.0, or Trimmer by George 3.0, they all work the same. So look at this block, look how perfect it is. And on the back, I had a little scrap there, look how incredibly close it got to that stitch line and it looks amazing. And now you're gonna be able to perfectly stitch these together and make them look like you want. And it's just the most wonderful thing. So I love this thing, I, I just think it's wonderful. You guys, you know I'm all about efficiency and the um, quickest way to do something and still have it be effective. So this is just wonderful. 
So I'm going to continue to do this to all of the blocks and I'll see you back here in a little bit when it's time to put them together. For the triangles, I just did a rough cut, uh, rounded a little bit, and in here I did a three quarter inch cut to separate the two because there's an inch and a half in between them. So that'll get you right down the center and leave you enough seam allowance to cut. Okay. And you'll find it's easier to trim the shorter sides first. Okay, and now I have some little office binder clips and I just like to put these together so that I know I'm going to sew these two together and they're not going to get mixed up with the other sets 